Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic, design outputs. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video you've seen, please go back and watch the introduction. You can check out the video description below for links to any supporting information and a summary of the material that we will cover. In my executive series, we have a standard agenda, which covers four areas. You can see those four areas in the progress bar below. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get those three bonus questions. Our requirement, design output, comes directly from 820.30D and ISO 1345 section 7.3.4. Design output in five words. Create design outputs, fulfilling inputs. We have to have a procedure that defines how we handle design outputs. Design outputs must allow for the adequate evaluation of design inputs, they must contain or reference acceptance criteria. And finally, we have to identify those design outputs that are essential for the safe and effective functioning of our medical device. Design outputs have to be documented, reviewed, and approved. There are two types of design outputs that we mainly deal with. Those design outputs that specifically reside in the device history file. These are your verification, your validation protocols and reports but you also have the design outputs that become part of your device master record. These are the actual product specifications and all the documents that you transfer into manufacturing. How do I know this is working? Well, first, we've identified essential design outputs. Second, our design outputs include the documentation needed for manufacturing, installation, and servicing, the documents that go into the device master record. Third, Design outputs are reviewed and approved before they are released. So how do I know this is not working? Well, first, we have issues during design verification because the outputs are not complete and they lead to design verification failure. Second, when we go to design transfer, manufacturing or our suppliers, they can't actually meet the design requirements. They can't meet the design specifications that have been developed in your design outputs. And then finally, we don't have any essential outputs or if we do, they're not treated as essential when we get to manufacturing. Now for the three bonus questions. First, who reviews and approves the design outputs or the product specifications? Second, how early is manufacturing involved in the design and development process? Do they have input into the design outputs? And then finally, how do we identify essential outputs and once those essential outputs are transferred into manufacturing, how do we ensure that they're still treated as essential outputs? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.